Okay, one more video for the day. Um, didn't really plan on making this one, but I was thinking about it, and I guess I just kind of want to go ahead and do this, get this out of the way, play a game with this Free Folk agenda that is still fairly new, and talk about the agenda a little bit, since I do have some pretty strong feelings on it, but I think I'll save the discussion for after actually playing a game with it, see what happens first. Anyways... This agenda has the most extreme deck building restriction by far out of any of the agendas. I'll never have a period of time where I go through and try to play this out of every faction, because you cannot actually play any faction with the Free Folk. Your deck must be 100% neutral cards, which normally would mean that your deck is probably going to be garbage. But fortunately, this agenda also has what is probably the strongest advantage by a pretty fair amount, with the only real requirement being that you need a bunch of wildlings. And we do have a bunch of wildlings. So we're going to see what happens. I slapped this deck together in literally less than five minutes, I think. I've got all of the wildlings that you would expect. I'm not sure if it's correct to use Mance, but we have some winter plots and we have the last of the giants, so who cares? The only non wildling characters are Jockin, who goes with giants, and Begging Brothers because it's treachery on a character. Everything else in the deck is like bare bones economy, weirwood bows are super annoying, and then milk nightmares hands judgment to try and prevent any sort of shenanigans from stopping us. The plot deck is very straightforward. It's a bunch of two claim stuff and political disaster. I'm not sure what this seventh plot should be. I honestly don't think it matters a whole lot, but I just went ahead and put it in counting coppers because why not? Let's see what happens. So while we're waiting, I guess I can talk a little bit about the game plan of the Free Folk and the way that the games with the agenda usually go. This is basically a hyper aggro deck that seeks to reduce the opponent to zero cards, both in terms of characters on board and in their hand very quickly, starting from the first turn. There are some bad matchups for this agenda, but you can still win even in a bad matchup. Like, Greyjoy here, I'm not sure if this was a bad matchup. Maybe if I don't get economy. Let's mulligan since we don't have any econ. Okay, we got a bunch of economy. That's good. Greyjoy usually does not have March to the Wall. We have to set up Mance, so let's hope they don't. Maybe if he marches my Mance, I can actually lose this game pretty handily. What are we going to start with here? Probably just the Winds of Winter. We do have the Last of the Giants with Mag the Mighty in hand, and that can screw him over really badly if he's not ready for it. I would say that Greyjoy has a chance of winning against the Free Folk if they just see, like, a lot of their saves in the first turn or two of the game. Then they've got pretty good odds, because they can maybe do Valar Morghulis or something, I don't know. The real bad matchups are Targaryen because Dracarys and Martell using, in a, you know, the typical Martell attrition strategies. Let's see here. If we marshal Val, then we still have two gold for Last of the Giants, and Val can put in this young Spearwife. Luckily, Martell attrition doesn't really exist that much anymore. So, well, not luckily, but luckily if you're playing Free Folk, basically... That's one of the worst matchups, but you don't have to worry about it nearly as much as you had to in the past. So we put out Balon. None of these locations really do anything that we care about. We're going to start with an Intrigue with Val. Bring this guy in. He probably won't be able to defend that. Then we're going to apply two Military Claim. Hopefully he doesn't have Nightmares or anything like that. Oh, this might get cancelled. Yeah, that's going to get cancelled. Drown God Fanatic. Should still be able to win the challenge. He can only bring four, I think. We can also actually ambush this character in for two gold because of Mance Raider. But we're going to save the two for what is obviously better. Oh, that's smart. He's going to... 
defend using that. So he's able to defend one challenge here. That's a pretty good start for him. Let's bring out our trap card. I'm going to kill Val so I can use the Intimidate on Balon and then win a Power Challenge and get 4 Military Claim. Oh, it's going to be even more than 4, actually. Anyways, the most important thing is to just kill his board no matter what. See if he uses a Risen from the Sea. No Risen. Pass. Intimidate. Hopefully this kills Balon, but it's pretty likely that he has risen from the sea. I might should even apply Intrigue Claim to try and get the risen. Oh, he canceled Claim Effects. That's cute. There we go. Well, no risen. I would expect his plot to be Valar Morgulis, because this Mance is, due to the agenda, extremely scary just sitting there by himself. And why not use Valar with a clear board? Let's go with Early Frost. Uh, actually, we might want to draw another character, so just another wins a winner. Yeah, Valar. Obviously, I'm going first every round. Drew more characters, that's good. That should be the game, because that's his reset. His board is clear. He's going to have barely any gold to marshal anything. Um, let's see. So we have effectively five gold, meaning we can put out these two guys. And it's going to be four Intrigue claim this turn, more than likely. With probably nothing that he can do about it. Well, I guess you might as well marshal her since she doesn't actually die. We can put Nightmares or Milk on her in a future turn. Um, if I don't apply the military claim here, he can defend the military from the Spear Wife with the Iron Fleet Scout. So we might as well do it. Then just sit here and win dominance. Since we used our agenda, we can't, like, do a military and then get power claim or anything like that. Now we're going to do early frost because it's another two claim and it has the highest initiative other than you win or you die which I don't want to play quite yet because I still feel like I'm in a pretty good position now his plot could be like trade routes or trading with the Pintoshi or something and try to top deck into a big character but I beat those on initiative so that's pretty good for me at least uh, exchange I don't know how much that's going to help him give him an expensive character um, raiding longship is pretty irrelevant. Support of the people is super irrelevant. That's why exchange, in my opinion, is worse than counting croppers, because the opponent can control what you get. I gave him that raiding longship there. I really don't know how much that good that's going to do him. It's only got three gold, and 
the sea tower and whatever else he can marshal. There's the raiding long ship. If I was him, yeah, I'd just save the two gold for Hagen's daughter. Economy, and the only character we can play is this guy. But we have one gold for the nightmares on Hagen's daughter. Probably kill the young spear wife if he does military. Since we seem to be ahead with power on our faction card, the young spear wife is unlikely to get stealth. That was pointless, but who cares? Declaring a defender, that is, since he just used the longship on it. She's going to die either way. So this turn we're going for the four intrigue claim and we're going to kill Hagen's daughter with the nightmares. Out she goes. Intrigue claim. Discard everything, please. More intrigue claim. Over half his hand discarded. Seems pretty fair. I'm going to use you win or you die here because my hand is pretty worthless and I want to make sure that I stay ahead and get as far ahead as I can before I play counting coppers because that's like my weakest turn. I could play political disaster but that's really, I should have played political disaster actually. Forgot that he might use that plot. Political disaster is only there to discard the opponent's economy. If they only have one economy location it's like who cares. I drew some really good cards here so. Definitely rattle shirt. And we can bring out Varamir. I guess he's better than Egret. He can give himself stealth anyways, but if he marshals like Asha, then he can give himself plus five or intimidate or something. Egret's just always stuck with stealth. Man, he sure does have a lot of locations. It's going to be really unfortunate when those all get discarded. Unfortunate for him. And this is why we did You Win or You Die to guarantee that we can discard his whole hand this turn. Now he's going to be out of cards. We're going to flip Political Disaster. And he's not going to have his locations either. I mean, honestly, I think that this game was over as soon as I cleared his board on turn one. But I'm glad that he's dragging it out because I get to show what happens when you try to drag the game out against this agenda. Um, jeez, this doesn't matter at all, does it? Let's just do Intrigue. Who cares? It literally doesn't matter because if I tried to go for the four power claim, he only has two to steal anyways.
So 10 power, the opponent's at zero. All those locations are going away. I think we're going to win this one. That makes sense, I guess. Who knows, maybe he'll draw like two King's Roads, a Euron, and a Victarion, and he'll like come back into the game. We're going to keep our Rose Roads. The Great Hall is no longer useful because our big guys are all dead, except for Rattleshirt, who's already been marshaled. This is a pretty decent draw because of the... Oh, okay, that works. Yeah, that's the Free Folk. I showed a game with it for you. So let's talk about this agenda a little bit now. I think that I've come to dislike this agenda more than any other card that's been released or that's been played since I've been playing the game. And I dislike the deck and play style that it enables more than any other deck. It's just so one-sided. As you saw in that game, I'm really glad that I got to show basically a typical free folk game and how it's going to go most of the time. It's uh, very oppressive, to put it mildly. And you pretty, pretty much, if you win the challenges on turn one like I was able to do there, you kind of just win. And it's very unlikely that the opponent will have any chance to come back or do anything about it. Which is different from the typical Game of Thrones match in which you may be at a disadvantage to start with, but it does feel like you at least still can play the game to some extent and try to do something, maybe play your reset and come back into it. The problem with this deck is that the threat does not really come from specific characters so much as from the agenda itself, which allows you to apply either four military or four intrigue claim every single turn, as long as you have anything on the board that can make challenges. So the Valar Margulis, as you saw, did not matter that much. Killing Mance Raider, who cares? We only need a young spear wife and a wildling bandit to discard over half of the opponent's hand and basically choke them out of options for the rest of the game. So my problem with this agenda is it's just very autopilot. There's very little decision making on either side of the field. The opponent usually has no options and cannot do anything. All that you need to do is turn your characters sideways and if they can't fully defend, then the game's kind of just over. I don't know. Maybe this would be more okay if it wasn't for the fact that so many wildlings either have stealth or have abilities that make it easy to win challenges. Varamir can give himself plus five or stealth. Uh, the crow killers can often do two challenges because these two claim plots have low reserve. Val puts additional characters in to boost her effective strength way up. The Wildling Scout gives people stealth. Things like that. Very obnoxious. I, I don't... I don't know. I guess maybe if I go up against this agenda with one of my more normal decks and I get rolled by it in a similar way as we saw there, then I'll probably show that as well at least once. Sort of show it from the perspective of someone that's getting free fault, so to speak. But other than that, I probably will not show many games with or against this agenda unless I have maybe some sort of weird miracle where I'm able to beat it with a normal deck. I dislike it because it, it feels a lot like the combo decks that were that eventually had to be disabled by the first edition of the restricted list. The, the combo decks were very non-interactive, and they really gave your opponent no chance to play. Unless something very strange happened, you would usually win pretty much from turn one or two, and the opponent just kind of had to sit there and watch you win the game. And I'll give the combo deck some credit, because with those, at least you did need like some moderate amounts of practice and familiarity with the cards and the triggers that you're enacting, because you're doing like 30 triggers on one turn in order to pull it off. 
with this deck there's not even that it's like you can just slap all these wildlings in here slap in the two claim plots and you're probably going to have a pretty good matchup against any sort of like semi-normal deck that's actually trying to play characters onto the board and win challenges and get renown and things like that i think it's pretty bad for the game it's because the matchups it creates are so polarizing um even when you lose with it it's usually about as boring as when you win with it so yeah i don't know that's that's kind of my thoughts on it i would compare it to a cheese strategy even using this agenda with all these two claim plots in the same way that those combo decks were pretty much a cheese strategy and made the game unfun to play i do I have some sympathy for the concept of Fantasy Flight releasing this and trying to make Wildlings a viable theme and, like, neutral decks a thing. Obviously, it's cool if they were able to do that, but in my opinion, they went too far and made something that's just overpowered and stupid. I think this agenda might have been better if it specified that the claim value on your plot cannot exceed one, because if you use it with one claim plots, there's a lot more actual decision-making involve, involved, and the opponent has a lot more of a chance to actually play their cards without getting totally choked out of the game from turn one. Maybe that would have been better. Anyways, just thought I'd share my thoughts on this since it's such a weird agenda and it's so exceptional. I thought it deserved a video dedicated to it, and at the same time, it will never get the normal treatment of me making decks with all the different factions for the agenda for obvious reasons so yeah